Welcome back for another Teacher of the Year profile. We're visiting with Elizabeth Henriksen, who is one of two Teachers of the Year from the Sacramento City Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Okay. So tell us about yourself. Tell us uh, where you teach and tell us what you teach. I teach at Sutter Middle School. I teach seventh grade language arts history. I actually teach the GATE program. So my students are not all identified GATE. The majority of them actually aren't, but it just means they have gotten usually proficient or higher on their test scores through state testing. So is it language arts and history or language yeah, arts history? Yeah, so what I teach is actually pretty interesting because I have students for two periods back to back, which for me is awesome because when I made the switch from elementary school to middle school, I was really nervous about not having that connection with my students, getting to know them all day long in a classroom. So having them for two periods makes a huge difference because I know their names by the end of the first week and I get to know them and I have two full periods to you know just to be with them and to get to know who they are. So what are st seventh and eighth graders uh, studying language arts th these days? So I just do seventh grade okay. but seventh grade is heavy on writing. We do a narrative piece, we do a, an analysis piece um, with expository writing, we do or argumentative essays and research. In seventh grade, the writing is, what I really push is evidence. And having to, any kind of, uh, whether it's characterization and they're having to talk about a character, they're providing specific evidence. They're explaining the evidence. If we're doing the fall of Rome and an essay on that, they are providing the specific evidence and explanations. So that's a huge part of seventh grade language arts. We also do grammar, everyone's favorite, my personal <laughs> favorite. And reading, of course, we do classroom novels. In history, we cover medieval Europe to medieval Japan and China. We get into the Renaissance and we get into uh, world religions as well. We cover a little bit of Islam and Buddhism. And so it's pretty interesting. A lot of my kids come in and they think that history is boring and which I thought it was when I was that age too, but they realize, oh, it's actually pretty interesting. And so I do my best to make sure that they have fun with it. So are you able to relate you know, current events uh, back to history and, and you know, how do you do that? And when you do that, do the students kind of get it a little bit more? Yeah, so with history, with seventh grade, I, um, there are some current events when they, when they see happen, things happening in the world, we can discuss them. It's, it's pretty touchy because so much of what we see in the news is pretty controversial. So what I try to come across to my students is just the, the, the truth, the foundation. So when we discuss maybe world religions or certain countries, we just discuss what's there, what we can prove to be true, um, maybe fighting against what we always see in the news, negativity, et cetera. So. Do you find uh, seventh graders to be opinionated about world events? And, and Yes. Yeah. Because they're teenagers, of course they are. They are teenagers. Yeah. I have students that are highly opinionated on, in politics especially, but um, they are opinionated and we even go back to, not even with current events, but with, they get, can get really riled up when we discuss, say, for example, the Crusades. And when they find out what is causing these crusades, you know, they, get, they can get really fired up with, oh, it's the Christians, no, it's the Muslims. And I, then I say, what about the Jews who are caught in the middle of all of this? And so they can really get fired up about these things that happened you know, hundreds of years ago. So they are opinionated they, and they actually want to learn. They really, they find interest in learning about the events of our history. So uh, getting back to teaching English, you know, you're teaching a lot of the mechanics. Yes. It's and trying and trying to develop the good habits, <laughs> but how do how do you how do you do that and also uh, make sure that they're critical thinkers with their writing? This is a big push. Um, my class, I say, prove it all the time to them. So when I'm teaching mechanics, every day we have a warm up that's mechanics, and so again, it's not their favorite. I love it, and I see the value in it. I bring in real life pieces from People Magazine or um, signs that are full of errors and I say, if you don't learn this, this is, this is gonna be you in the future where you're making these mistakes in the People Magazine article. Um, but I always make them prove it. And so I never accept them an answer like, well, it's a period, why? Because it's good grammar. Well, what do you know? Well, it has to go there. I make them prove to me. So if they are telling me, for example, that that word's an adjective, well, prove it. They hear me say prove it all the time. Oh, okay, well, that modifies a noun and adjectives modify nouns. And so that's a really big part. And in the writing, Really, that comes down, students often, 
they can give their reason, they can even find good evidence. But what's really hard in seventh grade is that analysis piece of explaining. Okay, so you have your reason, you have your evidence. Now, how do you explain what this evidence means? And that's the hardest part of teaching writing in seventh grade. And mm -hmm. it takes them all year, and it'll take them years after seventh grade to really understand what does that mean? Don't just restate the evidence again or the reason again, but really explain in your own words. And that's the analysis part so difficult. What's it like for you to see them from their first week to their last week? Oh, I love it. I do so much uh, informal writing in my classroom, quick writes, journal entries, and that I give constant feedback on. And I love sending a parent email at the end of the year and saying, so-and-so, the first of the year, his journal entries are so short, they were hardly coherent. He never used evidence. And now he's giving me evidence and explaining it. And course the parents just beam with pride but and I love just telling the students that because they you know get a little more puffed mm -hmm. up on the chest and um, just really it feels good it feels good that, that they see me as being incredibly strict and incredibly probably demanding when it comes to this I can get the same feedback over and over sometimes for kids it'll take seven journal entries of me saying you have to be more specific on your evidence before I finally go oh mm -hmm. that's what you mean What's your biggest challenge in, in, in teaching kind of the basics of writing and, and all the different functions? Yeah, um, I would say that my students, even though I teach a gate class, the levels of the students. I have some students that come and I go, I might not teach you anything. You are such an amazing writer. Mm -hmm. And others that come in and they can have a whole page of writing with maybe one period and no capital letters. So that is definitely the hardest, is that you have this short amount of time each day, you have this, you know, the short school year to get every kid in the same, close to being on the same level. And that is definitely the most difficult. And also making them care, because writing isn't always fun. So I try my best to make interesting writing topics. So I, for example, I'll put up random images from the internet on the computer, on the board, and I'll say, okay, choose an image that best describes Dally from The Outsiders. And they love that because they can talk in their groups first and go, oh, it's definitely that knot because Dally's tied up and he's just so confused. Um, they love that. And so I try to make them, you know, have a buy-in with writing by bringing in interesting topics that they really want to write about. So how long have you been teaching now? This is my 20th year next year. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So in, in that time, uh, how have you seen the value of professional development I mean, obviously, the classics aren't going to change. Yeah. Um, but your approach in maybe teaching them ha has to change. Yeah. Um, I feel like I have always been energetic, et cetera. I think now with, uh, with Common Core, the push for bringing in primary sources is just so different. I hear different conversations in my classrooms now. I, I, I've learned throughout the years to have you know, in my, with my groups have meaningful conversations instead of just, oh, talk amongst yourselves. You know, really seeing these kids grow and know how to talk and analyze primary source documents, et cetera. Um, I, so I think that's probably the biggest change is for me personally, is just knowing really how to maneuver and get kids to think. And my expectations have probably gotten each year even higher and higher for my students because I know what they can do. And mm. I want them to do it, and yeah. they do. So what does it mean for you to be a Teacher of the Year? Oh, it's a really big privilege. I definitely um, feel grateful that to be acknowledged by my principal. And it's overwhelming sometimes because I feel like my world is in my classroom. And that's, I feel like, where I feel comfortable. And so, um, but it feels good to me. It feels, it feels nice. The teachers don't get a lot of acknowledgement, I think, on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's, it feels nice. Did you always want to be a teacher? No. I had friends and even teachers tell me I should be a teacher all growing up, and I always said, no way. I just didn't see it. Um, I started college pre-med thinking I was going to be a doctor because I had always wanted to be a doctor. Since I was three, my parents said that I was going to be a doctor. And then my first year of college, I realized I just did not have an interest in anatomy, germs. So now I'm in a classroom where there's no germs at all. Not at all. Um, but once I knew and I was... A, a freshman in college, sophomore in college, I, I knew, and I've been on the same path. So I feel really thank. I was in my first classroom when I was 21, so I feel thankful that I have always I've known that at a young of an age. Well, and that path brought you here, and now you're a teacher of the year. I know. Thank 
Thank you. you know, we've been speaking with Elizabeth Hendrickson, who is one of two teachers of the year for the Sacramento City Unified School District. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you very much.